we talked about Philly and transitioning into that. Philly special or the Knicks, the Nova Knicks, who is actually the biggest threat to the Celtics not repeating? That's a trick question, almost feels like, right? <laughs> I mean, I feel like health, health is the biggest threat to the Celtics. I mean, if both teams can stay healthy, then that's a, a challenge for the Celtics on both sides. I mean, you're going to have two wings that can defend both guys. They're interchangeable on the Knicks. You're getting Julius Randle back. You still got Brunson. You've got Josh Hart, DiVincenzo, Deuce McBride off the bench. We still have Mitchell Robinson, which, yeah, Hardenstein, the loss is, it hurts, but he's a starting level center in the league. And he was a difference maker against the Cavs two years ago when we basically bullied them into submission in the first round. So I don't think Philly's that much better than us. I think we're deeper. We have a lot more pieces. And also I think down the stretch, we're going to have crazy lineups that we can run too. even where we can try a, a faster lineup with Randall at the five. And then you have OG at the four and so on and so forth. So now you're the floor spread out. You can move constantly. And that's what kind of you want to have. Um, but then on the Philly side of it, you do have Embiid. You get Paul George. You got Tyrese. That's a hell of a big three right there. Nobody's debating that. I think that was a big swing they made for Paul George. And getting him definitely puts them neck to neck with the Celtics for the best team in the, the Eastern Conference. But at the same time, Embiid is a injury prone big man who I mean I don't I'm not wishing anything on him like it's enjoyable watching him play basketball when he's healthy and seeing a guy that big who can do everything that he can do and same with Paul George like I feel like Paul George has gotten a bad rap he stayed healthy this year so if he can stay healthy do whatever he did this year and keep doing it I would say the same thing to Anthony Davis but like if Paul George can do the same thing he did this year then the sky's the limit for this team. Like, the the Celtics don't have anybody for Embiid. Um, if you're getting Paul George at his peak, at, I mean, he doesn't even have to be at his peak because you still got Maxi. Maxie's an ascending talent. I think Paul George honestly should be the number three on this team because Maxi is that good, and and we'll see where it goes from there. But in my opinion, I still think the, the Knicks would be ahead of Philly right now. Even getting Paul George, that's great and all that, but the Knicks doing what they did, getting Macau Bridges, a guy who can do what we had trouble with, guarding guys like Tyrese Maxey, the smaller guards who are quick. We got OG who can guard one through five, like Randall. This will change his game a little bit, I think, for the better. I think he won't have to be tasked with doing so much. And and we still got Brunson. Like, this uh, MVP level player. I think people forget about that. Um, but no, I, I think it's one Celtics, two, probably the Knicks. And then, you know, three is Philly. Hey, before Greg breaks down his thoughts on it, Miles, give me what you would think is the best closing lineup for the Knicks since you guys do have that versatility what would you have as like that closing lineup or kind of like what the Warriors had? What's your death lineup? I think the death, death lineup would be Brunson, of course. Uh, you could either go DiVincenzo or Deuce. I think Deuce's defense, depending on the situation, and his outside shooting is a threat. But DiVincenzo, when he's hot, like it's different. Uh, Bridges at the three, OG at the four, and then – throwing Randall at the five. I'm sure Randall wouldn't like too many minutes at the five, but like if it's for the best for the team and you get those mismatches where he's got a, a center on him and he can blow past the center or he can take him outside. Like it's so many different lineups that I want to see Tibbs play around with early in the season and, and see what works and what doesn't work. But like that, I feel like is the best lineup that they've got. Hey, Greg. Who should the Celtics fear more, Philly or, or the Knicks? Realistically, either one of those teams can beat the Celtics because I still believe the Celtics are a little Fugazi. That's just my opinion. I don't fully trust them. 
I know they won one one championship this year. I'm not saying that it was something where it was like a fake route or anything like that, or that it was a fake championship. There's no, there's no such thing. They won, but their their path to get there was very easy. All right, there were no speed bumps. They there was you know it was a cleanly paved road. Right, there weren't even he wasn't driving down the street during East Orange where you hit a bunch of potholes. There were no potholes in the road. It was very easy for them to get there. Right, um, so yeah, I think this year will be significantly different. I think if you're talking about health, me, I'm a big believer in maximizing the potential of your team and going all in. And I think they both did that. The Knicks and this and something. I mean, the Knicks and the Sixers both did that. If I'm looking at it from my perspective, I think Joel, the team with Joel Embiid on it is always more dangerous because Joel Embiid it attracts so much attention when he's on the floor. It's, it's ridiculous. He, you you don't guard that guy one guy. You guard him with four guys. Okay, there are four sets of eyes on him at all times when he has the basketball. They can literally have to compress and pack the paint just to have a chance to stop him from doing what he wants to do down there. He's an unstoppable force when he gets going, when he's playing his game. All right. So the only people that can, the only thing that can stop the Sixers is themselves. That is, that is my, you're either you're getting, you're hurt or you go out there and have put up a stinker in the playoffs, which Paul George has been known to do and Embiid's been known to do. So you got to take that into account. Tyrese Maxey's made of the right stuff though. He shows up in big moments. He'll put 50 up in a playoff game. He's got no problem. He'll make a big shot in the playoffs. He's, he, he is emotionless. He's stone cold out there. So I, I we, we can trust him. Um, so, yeah, but I think I would look at the Sixers as more of a threat because, again, the matchup problem that Embiid causes for you, the fact that you have to, call, to, to pay so much attention to him just makes the, guy, the life of a guy like Paul George very easy. And he can kill you, too, for just shooting wide open practice jump shots, which is in, you're going to see during the regular season. You're going to see that. And you're going to see it during the playoffs, too, because just it just puts you in a conundrum. Pick and rolls with Paul George, you can do that. Pick and rolls with Tyrese Maxey with Paul George in the strong side corner. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing as a defense that you can really do because you have to, if you don't commit to, to Embiid in those situations on roll, short rolls, whatever, he's going to score. So, and then if you do, Paul George is right there on the off for the skip pass. That's a bucket. What are you really going to do? Like, what, what do you, how do you really guard that? They, they, they just present problems that teams can't answer. And I think the Sixers are in a really good situation with that big three. It might be the most perfectly constructed big three I've ever seen just from a bit, from a skill set perspective. Everyone plays so well off one another. It all, it all works so well, right? It's the perfect chemistry kind of fit from that perspective. Now, ironically enough, the Knicks are a team of chemistry, right? The Nova Knicks is chemistry. Chemistry galore, all right? They, they're taking chemistry class over there. So I fully understand where, where Knicks fans would be excited. They have a chance to win, too. I, I, it's, not, it's not me disrespecting them, but in reality, I trust the star power that Philly has over, over you know, and the three-point shooting they have around it, by the way. With Eric Gordon, with Kyle uh, Kelly Oubre, with those guys, uh, I think Kyle Lowry will probably come back. I think he will. Um, they're gonna have shooting all over the place, man. Like this, it's a really good situation for those three um, as well. And I'm not saying the Knicks don't have plenty of shooting. They do. The Knicks are really good. The Knicks can beat anyone. They can beat anyone in the NBA with the team they have. They, I'm not discounting that. But you're asking me who Boston should be more scared of? It's probably Philly. It's probably Philly. 